Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our video, where we will explain in detail about provision for adverse deviation. But before we discuss about that, the following question we need to know is, what is insurance? Insurance is a contract, represented by a policy, in which an individual or entity receives financial protection or reimbursement against losses from an insurance company. Given the nature of the business, insurers need to make estimates of future claim costs to determine premiums and portion of funds that must be set aside to pay future benefits, usually by using best or central estimate. Best estimate means the value derived by an evaluator using deterministic methods that best represents the expected outcome with no optimism or conservatism. The term estimate without further qualification is undemanding. Just a rough calculation. There is normally no guarantee that an estimate will prove adequate or inadequate. In addition, the best estimate itself may have varying degrees of uncertainty attached. This involves using estimates that are believed to be worse than a central or best estimates, margin for adverse deviation. The margin for adverse deviation is the difference between the assumption for a calculation and the corresponding best estimate assumption. For example, if the actuary expects the interest rate to be 10% and assumes 8%, then the margin for adverse deviations is 2%. These margins provide comfort for management, shareholders and owners, policyholders and regulators, but more importantly, these margins are essential to protect insurers against unexpected losses to survive and so meet its policyholders' expectation. The uncertainty in the underlying estimate of the reserve is often greater than is realized by those who rely on the figures and so reliance on unmargined reserves can be misplaced. Great. We have now understood quite a few about insurance, so we are ready to move on to the main topic of this video. Provision for Adverse Deviation The provision for adverse deviation is defined as the difference between the actual result of a calculation and the corresponding result using best estimate assumptions, the dollar amount of increase that results from the application of the margin for adverse deviations. For example, if that 2% margin for adverse deviations in the interest rate assumption increases liabilities from $100 million to $120 million, then the provision for adverse deviations is $20 million. The provision for adverse deviation shall be determined such that the overall valuation of guaranteed liabilities secures 75% sufficiency. Some properties about provision for adverse deviation are as follows. The less that is known about the current estimate and its trend, the higher should be the provision for adverse deviation. Risks with low frequency and high severity should have higher provision for adverse deviation than risks with high frequency and low severity. For similar risks, contracts that persist over a longer time frame should have a higher provision for adverse deviation than those of shorter duration. Risks with a wide probability distribution should have higher provision for adverse deviation than those risks with a narrower distribution. To the extent that emerging experience reduces uncertainty, provision for adverse deviation should decrease and vice versa. A provision for adverse deviation methodology should 1. Apply a consistent methodology for the entire lifetime of the contract. 2. Use assumptions consistent with those used in the determination of the corresponding current estimates. 3. Be determined in a manner consistent with sound insurance pricing practices. 4. Vary by product, class of business, based on risk differences between the products. 5. Be easy to calculate. 6. Be consistently determined between reporting periods for each entity that is. The risk margin varies from period to period only to the extent that there are real changes in risk. 7. Be consistently determined between entities at each reporting date, that is, two entities with similar business should produce similar risk margins using the methodology. 8. Facilitate disclosure of information useful to stakeholders. 9. Provide information that is useful to users of financial statements. 
10. Be consistent with regulatory solvency and other objectives. 11. Be consistent with IASB objectives. Then, when do we use a larger margin for adverse deviations? A larger margin for adverse deviations, compared to the best estimate assumption, is appropriate if 1. The actuary has less confidence in the best estimate assumption. 2. An approximation with less precision is being used. 3. The event assumed is farther in the future. 4. The potential consequence of the event assumed is more severe. 5. The occurrence of the event assumed is more subject to statistical fluctuation. A smaller margin of adverse deviations is appropriate to use, if the opposite of stated above is true. Here are the three categories of margin for adverse deviations. The first category is, claims development or liabilities. Considerations are related to the insurer's operations, like claims management, underwriting, and others, data on which the estimate is based, and line of business. The second category, recovery from reinsurance ceded. Considerations are related to the risk that the reinsurer default on its obligation through insolvency. The third category, investment return rates, address mismatch risk between payment of claims and availability of liquid assets, error in estimating the payment pattern of future claims, and asset risk including credit or default risk and liquidity risk. Next, we will discuss about methods that is used to derive PAD for claim liability. There are three methods that can be utilized to derive PAD for claim liabilities, MAC method, bootstrapping, and industry benchmark. The first method, MAC method. This method was originally described in MAC, 1993 a. It consists of formula for deriving the mean reserve and prediction error, with the underlying reserving method being the standard column sum chain ladder approach. It is said to be distribution free, as no assumptions are made regarding the distribution of the underlying data. Although the method only produces an estimate of the mean reserve and the prediction error, the full distribution of claims can be estimated by applying a bootstrap procedure to MAC's method. The pros for MAC method are MAC method usually provides stable results. MAC method measures parameters, process, and total risk. But there is also its cons. The cons for this method are MAC method's model only provides the mean and standard error of the claim distribution. MAC method does not explicitly measure tail variability and does not model well the situation when the actuary selects factors other than the weighted or simple average. The second method, bootstrapping method. Bootstrapping is a well-established statistical technique that is used in a wide variety of applications. The basic idea begins with a sample of data, which has been drawn from a wider population. The goal is to estimate a statistic in that wider population, for example the mean of a random variable, and to understand the distribution around that statistic, using the sample data. A standard statistical approach is to make assumptions about the distribution of the random variable in the population, derive the statistic within the sample and then use sampling theory to determine the distribution around that sampling statistic. This approach works well if assumptions can reasonably be made about the underlying distribution in the population. However, where the distribution is not known, an alternative approach is needed. One such approach that has been shown to work well in certain circumstances is the bootstrap method. This involves repeatedly taking samples, with replacement, from the original sample, and then calculating the relevant statistic on each resample. The results across all of these samples can then be used to draw conclusions about the statistic in the underlying population. What is effectively being done in this procedure is to assume that the relationship between the original sample and the underlying population can be inferred from the relationship between the original sample and the bootstrap samples. Or, in other words, the population is to the sample as the sample is to the bootstrap. In effect, the conclusions drawn from analysis of the simulations in the bootstrap world are assumed to be approximately valid in the real world, which is sometimes referred to as the plug-in principle. The pros for bootstrapping method are, this method does not need to make assumptions about the underlying distribution. The actual data guides the simulation. 
Bootstrapping method generates a distribution of the estimate of unpaid claims, as opposed to just a point estimate. Bootstrapping method is a powerful procedure that allows us to estimate the distribution with very little data. The cons for this method are. Variability is limited to the historical data. Data outlier can have a leveraged effect on the results. And residuals might need to be divided into similar resampling groups. The third method. Industry benchmark. Industry benchmark is adoption of provision for adverse deviation loading according to industry benchmark by line of business that is simple average of provision for adverse deviation from different companies. The pros for this method are. It is simple to use. It is useful for companies that lack claim historical data. It can be applied to volatile data. And it can be used as a reasonableness check on the other methods. And the cons for this method are. The estimated provision for adverse deviation might not reflect the company's true variability of claim liability. And the mix of business is assumed to be similar to the benchmark. We have now fully understood the provision of adverse deviation. But why do we need to determine the provision of adverse deviation? The reason is because there are a lot of uncertainties in estimating claims. Therefore, it is difficult to capture longevity risk using traditional mortality projection methods. Here are some uncertainties in estimating claim liabilities. 1. Parameter error. Includes. Error in determining the values of the parameters of the claims runoff process. And parameters might evolve over time. 2. Process error. Includes. Future payments are random and unknown. 3. Model specification error. 4. Data error. 5. Future trends variability. Includes. Inflation, interest rate, claims runoff patterns, claims management process, exposure, business mix, staff departure, legislation, insurance market cycle, technology. 6. Reinsurance risk. You've now reached the end of this video. We hope that this video is informative and helpful to everyone who's watching. Thank you for staying till the end and make sure to comment down below to let us know what you think of this video.